afternoon and today news that is a uh, part of the getting ready for 2024 college football season and beyond as the college football playoff format was voted on today from what was six six to now five and seven here's bruce feldman among many other national writers who had the story from this morning about the college football playoff unanimously changing what will be the 12-team format starting this year and determined by the college football playoff, the 5-7. and seven. It will be five highest-ranked conference champions plus the next seven highest-ranked teams, basically also known as at-large. The original plan, of course, was 6-6. Six and six. It is now 5-7. and seven. We have a lot to get to. Let's get to a couple of quotes from Mark Keenan. He is the president of Mississippi State, also the chairman of the College Football Board of Managers. And then we'll, after this, we'll get to more of the details later. This is a very logical adjustment for the college football playoff based on the evolution of our conference structures, in other words, all the realignment, since the board first adopted the new format in September of last year, of 2022. I know this change will also be well received by student athletes, coaches, and fans. We all will be pleased to see this new format come to life on the field this postseason. So there is that. That's for 24 and 25, and of course, they have work to do on what they do for 2026. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see this finally come to fruition, even though it was always going to. I mean, there was no reason to suspect that it wouldn't, uh, other than Kirk Schultz holding it up for whatever guarantees uh, that they got out of this, which they don't, you know, they're not automatic qualifiers, which they didn't even really want. They wanted more of the... Uh, the five seven model was what they were going to vote for. They just want to see what they can get. I'm curious to see long term what that means for Washington State and Oregon State, and you know down the line. But this is again just a two year deal. Uh, the things that are interesting to me about this are, you know, apparently the uh, according to Nicole Auerbach, the Big Ten and SEC are primed to see how many more auto automatic qualifier spots that they could get um, out of this. And also, there is no carve-out for Notre Dame here. No. Nope. And In fact, stop right there. Here is Joe Pampliano. Pampliano. This will just kind of confirm what you're saying, that if Notre Dame is the number one ranked team in the country, they would get the number five seed requiring them to win four straight games to win the title. And I wonder how long Notre Dame will put up with that. Um, if if it does derail them from the title, but it does mean that they'll get a home game. So I don't know. Like I, and I guess Notre Dame needs to, you know, look, you want to be independent and you want to get $60 million straight to yourself and all those things that you get with being independent. It comes with a sacrifice, and this is that sacrifice. But it is interesting that this is maybe the first time we've ever seen something where there's no carve-out for Notre Dame. Well, by the way, they would get the bye week during conference championship week. Somebody mm -hmm. brought that up because they're not a part of that. So they will get at least that. Craig, your thoughts? At least we're at 5-7, and seven, and moving forward, we know a little bit more. Yeah, I'll start with Notre Dame. I think that the benefits of being Notre Dame outweigh having to play one extra game. That's just me. I, I see all of this. Well, Notre Dame's on the clock. They're going to have to join a conference now because they're not going to want to, you know, have to play uh, without that conference championship tie-in, you know, the lack of the automatic uh, qualifier there. But it's just one game more, right? Mm -hmm. So is that worth trading away your independence and your solo television deal and the way that you've always operated and done things and the freedom to schedule how you want? And I know that there's other plans in place in theory that, you know, the SEC or the Big Ten or whoever could come together and box out Notre Dame scheduling-wise and leave them to where there's only so many options. But maybe that's what happens. I'm not making any declaration. I just think that the... A uh, whole well, Notre Dame screwed. Now it's one game. It's one game that uh, they otherwise wouldn't be able to have the the buy for. Correct. So that's all we're really talking about as far as being the automatic qualifier. But it is of interest and it is of note, and I understand why people are pointing that out because maybe it is something combined with other factors that does eventually force Notre Dame into 
given a ring to the Big Ten, but I feel like their phone's always available to call those leagues, and I don't know that today is like the thing that pushes you over the edge, but we will see. Like I said, there's there's nothing that's uh, totally known right now. We're all just kind of flying by the seat of our pants with, with all of this and wondering how all of it's going to work out because Lord knows we didn't think that we would be here today this quickly as we are there was thoughts that this whole conversation would drag out farther and here boom dead a boom done five seven passed here we go two years and uh then we'll see what it looks like after that so the notre dame thing is is of interest but i just don't know if that's enough to to tip the scales in the favor of, of abandoning everything else that they've known for a uh, conference uh affiliation uh other part of it I'm glad that it's over with. I mean, at least this chapter of it, I'm glad that they've got this part of it settled. I know it's only for a couple of years, and beyond that, it's absolute insanity trying to predict what it'll look like, although you mentioned the push that's already apparently occurring from at least one commissioner that we'll we'll get to, but I'm glad that the whole argument over six and six and five and seven and will Kirk Schultz be able to put a stop to this or will it be hung up? That's over now. We know what the playoffs going to look like for the most part, and uh, I'm just glad to have something known in college football as opposed to constantly wondering and speculating when or if something will actually get done. So uh, that's just that's just refreshing to have that just kind of known. Yes, and, and to, to clarify... There are five conference champions, the highest-ranked five conference champions. Only four of them will get a first-round bye, being ranked one through four. The fifth conference champion can be any seed. Yes. It it doesn't mean they're number five. Uh, So that's why someone, when they mentioned Notre Dame, if they were ranked number one, unbeaten, whatever, in the country, would get the number five seed. There's a lot to get to. Now, Pac-12, Pac-2, what does this mean? I uh, sent a text to Ross Dellinger just to clarify because there's always moving parts. Um, uh, We'll have Dan Wetzel on from Yahoo Sports here today at 325. Tomorrow, three different college football writers to kind of break it down again. Remember, tomorrow the commissioners meet. But the Pac-12, the Pac-2, Oregon State, Washington State, at least for the next two years, 24 and 25, will not get any kind of conference championship honey. They will not. They can win the Pac-2, whatever you want to call it, but they will not be a part of the conference championship rankings. Uh, They're not looked at as a conference. They might be by 26, which might have been the give and take, giving in now to 5-7 and to possibly getting some, uh, some sugar or so down the road. Here is how the 